Welcome, this is my introductory to Linux course prepared by the LPI Academy in conjunction with the Cisco Net Academy. Uh, we are using the NDG, NDG NetLab environment for our curriculum. Alright, so, Module 1, an intro to Linux. What is Linux? The main goal is here to learn about a little bit about the history of Linux, Unix, understand the parts of the Linux subsystem, start learning about open source, find out where Linux runs, and kind of explore. Okay, so the evolution of Linux. Linux, in its nature, is a kernel, which is a centralized controller of software. It allows us to interact between like a human or a user and hardware. Uh, most people are very familiar with Windows, and here Windows is going to act as that intermediate uh, intermediary. They add some tools to get uh, an operating system, uh, because technically a CLI or a command line is still a interaction. So there are some tools there that make it more user friendly. Shells or a shell command. Uh, again, that's going to be more like a command line uh, terminal. We have a system management that allows us to add users or add a user experience and then applications after our users because the purpose of using the system is to run applications to do certain work. Package it up and it becomes a Linux distribution or a Linux distro. There are several types of Linux distros out there and for LPI they do not classify a specific type. Uh, we are not going over a specific Linux distro. Linux uh, was invented as a hobby in early 90s by Linus, I can never pronounce his last name, Trevolds while at a university of Henskin in Finland, people began contributing to make it work on their hardware. The GNU project provided a base set of tools. So what is the GNU project? So that project is basically a mass collection or collaboration between everyone that wants to add to it. The goal here is open source or free software. In order to ensure the, entitled, the entire software for a computer grants its uses all freedom rights, the use rights, share rights, study and modify rights, even though it's fundamental and important parts, the operating system and all components need to be free. So that's part of that GNU project. So what is Unix? Unix is started in early 70s at Bell Labs, adopted by several universities, and now Unix is a trademark of the Open Group. An operating system must be certified to be called Unix. Linux is not certified, so it's Unix-like. Not Unix, but like Unix. So what's the overall role or function of Linux? The kernel manages the application processes. It also allocates and reclaims memory. It will actually uh, allocate access to storage and processing units. The abstract hardware specific functions, so applications are hardware agnostic. It provides security and isolation of users. Switches between multiple processes. Uh, the preemptive multitasking. Interesting part here is it's similar when you think Windows or a Mac or Linux the base functionality of the operating system is pretty much identical. They all provide access to a disk and processing resources. They all control access to memory. It's just kind of more how they're doing it and that really separates the main uh, flavors of them. Open source is a huge concept here. Humans write software in source code. That code has to be compiled. 
There is typically a compiler that will translate source to a machine language. If you have the source, you can make changes and see how it works in the machine language. Microsoft does not give you the source code. Microsoft gives you the compiled code, meaning you can't make changes to the source code. With Linux distros, you can. Open source means you can inspect and change the source code as you want, and that does mean any modifications could improve or break it. Typically with collaboration, we're not dealing with modification that will break the operating system because the community wants to see this grow so even if you have one or two people that are sending out code that damages it you have several hundred that are reviewing and reanalyzing and then fixing it common linux distros so keep in mind in order to form the distribution it's the kernel, the tools, the installation, packages, and the management that will form the distribution. Red Hat is one type. They form things like uh, Fedora, Scent, or Scientific Linux. There's another major flavor called Debian, which is more Ubuntu. And sadly, more and more organizations are using a Debian-based, uh, a lot of appliances use a Debian-based distro just because it's more user friendly. Linux runs on everything. I mean, phones, Raspberry Pi, any type of computing device, uh, a smart, smart TV, a smart washer, dryer. If you're at the gym and you're on a treadmill that has a computer or TV synced into it, it's probably running Linux. So choosing the appropriate operating system is important to do. So for this, we're looking at understanding the distribution lifecycle management and examining the different operating system differences. So the distribution lifecycle management, what will the computer do? What does the software do? What does it need to specify in the hardware or software? Who has to take care of it? How long is it needed to live for? And is there a time frame before it expires? So part of this has a release cycle. The software and the operating system upgrades come on a cycle. Updates can be major or minor. For example, a new version of Fedora can be released every six months. Minor releases, maybe every 12 to 18 months. Uh, major releases, like real major changes, maybe every few years, depending on the life cycle. Keep in mind, it takes time to code both updates, whether they be minor or major, and to make sure that they are ready for distribution. There's also a maintenance cycle, and typically with the software, they'll go through phases. Uh, if we're looking at a new application being developed, there will be the actively developed stage, the bug fix only stage, the security fixes, and then after a certain time, it's no longer supported, so the no update phase. This is that maintenance cycle. A short maintenance cycle means more frequent upgrades would be required, but that does mean more bugs are being caught and fixed more steadily. There are pros and cons of the cycle. Faster releases means newer software, but newer software may come with newer security risks or newer vulnerabilities because they haven't been tested long enough. That could be a pro and a con. Uh, faster software is a pro. The fact that it could lead to vulnerabilities is a con. Where longer maintenance cycles mean you'll be, a, you'll be supported at the current software levels longer you wouldn't need as many upgrades, but you have to wait for features. So that, that's, a, that's a concern. Longer maintenance cycles often require paid support packages. Longer support typically means, or sorry, longer maintenance cycles typically mean there is paid support individuals working on it. 
And uh, that can be very subjective. New features are introduced typically in a alpha or beta version. An alpha is a early onset stage that's not having all the kinks worked out. And then after it's been worked on for a little bit, it will go into a beta version. Beta version is still not a ready to release. And so it's not stable per se. But you can see between the alpha, beta, and release stages that significant changes may occur. After the beta period, it's typically classified as ready to release, and that would be signaling its stability. If you need newer features, you'll often be looking at beta feature or beta software because beta software comes out sooner, but it's not necessarily tested. Lastly, making sure things are backwards compatible meaning that older applications will work with the newer operating system that you have. Uh, more people are commonly understand like that type of issue when we went to Windows 8 or Windows 10. Not all the older applications worked on it. So it was not backwards compatible. Comparing our operating systems so Windows will split into desktop and server versions, slower release cycles, longer maintenance cycles. The emphasis on the backwards compatibility, it does have a graphical user interface, a GUI. It does improve scripting and management abilities to better compete with Linux. We have Apple OS X, runs on Apple hardware, which in reality is the same as PC hardware now. It's just maybe branded Apple hardware. Does have both a client and server version. Uh, it is a Unix certified operating system. Major releases are released typically yearly, sometimes every two years, but yearly is very common. Linux. Again, with all of its different distributions, is a unique in that after you choose Linux, you have to choose the appropriate distribution. You have to look at the functions of the distribution. Are they focusing on tools, on desktops, on networking, on penetration testing, on uh, easy to use graphical interface, so forth. Some distributions actually do have paid support. Some are all volunteer based. So there's pros and cons for each one of them. But again, this is just to get your feet wet. Again, this PowerPoint is for my Linux courses only. And we are using the NDG structure through Netacad. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.